Big Z Reviews. Midnight Mass is the newest limited series from director and writer and creator uh, Mike Flanagan. And it's tough to say if this is the best one yet. I really liked The Haunting of Hill House. I think I still might... Haunted, ha the Haunting of Hill House might be my favorite. Also, I enjoy Blind Manor, but not that's probably my least favorite of his series. But this one is really excellent. I know you struggled with what happened. With what I did. Yes, with what you did. But help is here. Good morning. I know I'm not who you expected to see. Just know I'm only here to help, and I look forward to meeting you all. I honestly think this is like pretty close to come to being the perfect show because it is it is such a it's something about it is just so beautiful and so well crafted and I really feel like Flanagan he is you know an actor's director because I mean there's multiple monologues like so many characters get the actors just have a chance to shine and I, I just have to imagine that people would love to work with him. And because it, it like it feels almost like a screenplay, I'm mean, not a screenplay, like um, a stage play, but like it doesn't it feel, it never really felt like over the top, it never felt like heavy handed, and it felt kind of realistic, like you know, all, all of a sudden no one is ever that perfect with what they have to say, but then sometimes they stumble a little bit, you know, and they kind of gather their thoughts, and they, then they let flow the most perfect monologue, and I love to like there's they let each other talk like when two people are having a conversation sometimes they just kind of let each other talk i couldn't help but think that this is like this is what you sound like in in how you imagine if you're gonna you're gonna have the perfect speech or something you know like the, the, they actually get to have that in this and the the, the funny thing is to talk too much about this you like you kind of have to slightly spoil it so I think I'm going to save a bit for just full spoiler talk later and just kind of avoid any spoilers for the first part of my review. But, you know, this is, uh, again, uh, Kate Siegel it comes back. is Mike Flanagan's wife. And she is, she, she's been in pretty much all of his stuff. And she is amazing in this again. Um, she plays Aaron Green. And she is, um, uh, you know, a person that, like, she is uh, kind of ran away from this island like, this is this little island that, you know, a fishing island that, like, a couple years ago had a big problem. Like, there was an oil spill, and it kind of, everything is kind of on the downtrend with the island. And Kate Siegel, she, um, she had left there, tried to become an actress, or and became, then ended up becoming a musician, but then kind of got in, something happened in their relationship, and she came back home to teach at the local school. And like, and she is like one of her, her, her boyfriend when I, when they're kids is a uh, Zach, uh, Gil Guilford as a uh, Riley Finn. And he is kind of your entry point in the series. Like I say, like me of the main character pretty much. And he, like you see at the beginning of the show, he is in a drunk driving accident. He kills a woman and that kind of haunts him and also kind of sends him into to jail for like five years. And in the beginning of the show is he's coming, you know, uh, on parole. He's coming back to live with his parents. And that, like, he's a bit of a pariah. And, like, he kind of gets into this this uh, this communi community on this island. But then there's also another person that's coming, that's coming back. But, like, they, or beforehand, they um, sent off their their pastor. It was a really old pastor. And, like, he was going a bit senile. They wanted to treat him. He'd been there forever. They want to go like a holy journey to like Jerusalem and everything. And instead, like maybe he's ill or something and they send this young pastor back and like he, but the young pastor has a box that he's carrying with him. And it's like, and I love too, they a little bit Easter egg, uh, you know, Riley Flynn, he, his childhood room has a movie poster of seven on it. So it's kind of like, what's in the box? And there's just, there's something like like this like the the family like I mean the dad kind of like it really is disappointed in the son for you know being a murderer essentially 
and but the mom loves them and forgives them and wants them they to go to church and you know but like there's and then the whole like, this the church uh, hamish linklater as father paul like he is really good to get some great sermons and then you have this like the most horrible woman it's kind of like the villain of the show samantha uh sloyan as bev keen and like she reminds me like if if you if if like if you've been if you grow up at as, as uh, going to church, you kind of know some of the people that are holier than than thou, but they're also kind of douchebags and horrible people. But they like use God to try to get over on people. Like I mean, like I mean, a little bit of a tangent, but like I I grew up as a Lutheran, and uh, like I I'm now an atheist, but um I but like what I saw there is kind of it's kind of a lot of weird stuff. Because, like, um, my local church, like, now the kid, it, like, burned down to the ground. And I, I watched my church burn down from my, uh, grandmother's porch. And then there was some weird stuff with, like, the pastor was old and he was, re he actually retired after the church burned down. But then, like, he then died right after. So, like, we, for a couple, of, like, years while the new church was being built, we, um, had, like, Sunday school and church service in the local Catholic schools, like, like the actual, like, um, like the, the, the Catholic school building. And we had like, um, traveling preachers come in every week. And there was like some, some were better than others, but eventually we end up getting this, this woman that she was really nice. And like, she was, um, also she was again married to another Lutheran pastor and like from a local parish, like a little different in, in the, like a, like they're a couple of towns away. But like um she like she was really nice. I know like of a lot of people I think they're not sure if they didn't like her that much. But that but like there is like some the the, the whole thing is like the the, the it's people in charge of like the community, like the community board or like in charge of like a lot of the church's money and stuff. And like I would the thing is I would go to Sunday school and then you know, confirmation school or whatever with with a, the kids of some of the people that in charge of the community. And they're all kind of douchebags. And, like, the one that's also, like, the the granddaughter of the old pastor, of the old, uh, you know, and there's, they, they kind of just, they, they didn't, they weren't very nice people. And they kind of shat on our new pastor. And uh, it was weird, but she actually did, like, for the confirmation and everything, she taught us, like, she, and, and uh, there's... There's some really weird stuff that she got like so frustrated, I think, with the community and with all the like a lot of weird stuff that's going on there. She ended up like she had gone to a honeymoon to uh to uh, Hawaii and then like they said she uh, her and her husband they they left they both left the church and moved to Hawaii and opened up a little shop or something there. And it's like, yeah, go, go you, you know, more power to you. <laughs> but that was after I, I um got I was confirmed, and then like my, whole, my deal with my mom was that for both me and my brother, like we go through go you have to go to church every weekend, and then once you're, once you're confirmed, you do what you want, you know. Because my dad was a, a Catholic, but he didn't really believe much, and uh, so he was the mom like just for for my grandma probably we were Lutheran. But like once the first the second I was confirmed, I didn't go to church ever again. I think maybe went to like an Easter or Christmas, but like other than that, no. But um, like there's, I love though that uh, now that the tangent's over, I love that like there is multiple different like uh, viewpoints in this. Like you have like true believers, so you have atheists, you have Muslims. And they all kind of get their chance to speak. And some, again, more, more of the Christians are evil in this. But, like, that's just for the story, you know. You also have some just true believers that are really nice people. But, like, you do have, like, have, like Bev Keen is horrifying. And, uh, like, there's just, like, this whole town, there's so many act like, actors that have been, that they, they do so great. They have these amazing moments. Like, um, Raul Kohli as Sheriff Hassan is also really great. Like, so many, every actor is so good. There's so much you could talk about with this, and it's like, I don't want to spoil too much until I get to the end of that. One of the critiques that do have the show are a direct spoiler, so I'll wait for that. But there's just, it's like, filmed so well, 
and written so well and acted so well. And I think I would really recommend it. But I think it does get sad at times. And I think this is probably the least scary of all of his, his uh, shows. Like, there's a few kind of jump scares, but the more uh, related to um, R uh, Riley Flynn. Like, he's haunted every night by the woman he killed in a drunk driving accident. And there's... Um, and there's also, there's something peeking in through windows that a little jump scary a couple times. But, like, I, I would say, it, like, it can be, it's depressing at times. And the first episode in two, there are a lot of animal deaths. But that's kind of related to applied. Like, I know it's so funny if I'm Michael, uh, Mike Flynn on, uh, on Twitter. And he's like, well, it's a horror film. What you gonna do? Or the horror show. You know, that's one of the most common tropes for horror films is... You know, at the beginning, you know, the pets die. And uh, they definitely do that. With, like, um, a beach full of stray cats and a, and a dog. Yeah, but, um, you know, other than that, like, there's just so much great about this. Like, it's so beautiful. And there's so many beautiful moments. Like, you just, you could watch and just love. Like, I think this is really rewatchable. And, you know, honestly, I think I give this uh, show a 10 out of 10. But, you know, on to full spoiler. And that's like, again, I didn't really show much what this show was about. Other than that, it's so great. Because, because it kind of is a spoiler to it. But essentially, this is a vampire show. And maybe the best and most original vampire show ever. But, like, it's so weird. That, that the biggest thing I didn't like about it is that, again, full spoilers now. They never say the word vampire. And it's like, I don't know if they're trying to be like The Walking Dead where they never say the word zombie. But it's like, at a certain point, it feels unrealistic. It, it took me out of it almost. And you know, I have no problem with like Linklater, with him not saying it's a vampire, because he believes it's an angel. And I love that the idea of this, some ancient thing that they built a tomb for, or they entombed it, but it opened up in the storm, and he finds it, and he becomes this servant, and he thinks it's an angel. But it's just this, like, ancient vampire. Like, I love that. And I love, too, when he comes in in the robe and he's like, yes, you should worship me. Yes. Like, I love that. I love the idea that the preacher is essentially poisoning the whole town with vampire blood. But, that, like, that only the people that come every week will actually get the full dose. And then, like, if they don't get it when they out become vampires, you're going to be, uh, you're going to feed the new vampires. But I think that the thing too, Linklater, like I love his character and I love what they do with him. But at a certain point, like he he's like he never really thinks that man. I'm kind of evil until at a certain point. Then he's like, oh yeah, I guess I guess this isn't good. You know, like the jump from um, nothing I'm doing is wrong to oh shit, I made a mistake is a little extreme. But then I the think thing I think I kept thinking like at a certain point I I think like it doesn't the show doesn't try to be like that. It's not a vampire killing show. You know, it's like a drama mostly. But at a certain point in like the last episode when like all of the humans that are left gather together and they're like trying to figure out what, we're trying to plan out what to do. It's like, you got to bring up vampires. You got to bring out the rules. You know, what are the rules? What are the rules? You know, because... Even though it's more realistic version of vampires, I think you ha you have to have that discussion. And I don't want it to be a joke. I don't want it to be like I don't think these vampires uh, twinkle in the star in the in the sunlight, you know. But like you would because there definitely are vampire legends in this. Because at a certain point, you say all the legends say that you know they talk about how like. You know, that the legends are based on some people that have a rare blood disorder that they burn up in the sun and stuff like that. Like, so the legends are there. So they would definitely use the fucking word vampire. You know, it just it bothered the shit out of me. Even though it really has nothing to do with the show, you know? Especially because they really kind of go, they decide that, you know, they have knives and guns, but nothing they can do will kill them. They just have to... Maybe give us more time, and the only thing that can kill them is the sunlight. And that creates for an interesting show, but it's like, you know, you should really think about this, because, I mean, I'm obviously 
because they're the preacher that's a vampire, they're not like the whole cross and holy water and stuff isn't going to affect them. But some of the things would still work. You know, I'm, I'm especially thinking about chopping off the head. That would definitely put them out of commission. And uh, um, a stake to the heart. Like, I kept thinking, like, when they're doing this, they get the knives out. I kept waiting for one of them to break a table leg and make a stake. You know, and they didn't. And it's like, oh, you know they're vampires. You know, one of them would said something about a stake. You, you know, it's not real life. If, if, if vamp, some poor vampire comes out, you think, I should probably make a steak. You know, that's just, it's so iconic. And it's weird not to do it. And I think a steak would work. Because these vampires, they're, they're, not, they're like creatures. Even though, like, they almost have to die before you fully turn. Like, they're still alive, you know? They're not the undead. They're, like, reborn. Like, they, even, they go, go on and on about how they're kind of like Jesus. They're reborn. And, like, so, like, they're pumping blood and the blood is healing them. So I think that um, a stake in the heart would prevent the heart from healing and would they probably wouldn't fully die unless they and they like they would be immobilized though they wouldn't be able to do anything they would be in a form of stasis you know unless they went until they were burned up in the sun i just i you know it's so stupid like i love the show so much but it's just it grinded my gears that they never once said the fucking word vampire or talked about you know you know, how to kill vampires, you know? But they felt like they were setting up that moment. If they didn't have that moment when they went into that one house and they were trying to gather weapons to fight them and trying to figure out a plan about how... But they couldn't... Like, they did. I mean, this could be the end of the world if they don't stop them right on this island. And But I love the way it ended. I love so much that it did. Although some of my favorite characters died. But it's so beautiful, some lot of deaths. I do love that the vampire, like... That they, it's like, it's so, it becomes so obsessed, animalistic when it's feeding, that it doesn't realize when she's tearing up the wing. It's just uh, such amazing moments. But it just, it, it just, it bothered me. And it's so stupid to bother me, but it, it bothered me. <laughs> you know? Other than that, it's just such a good show. Like, everyone is amazing. I think especially Kate Siegel and Zach Guilford and Lake Linklater, like they're especially they some of the standouts, but they're all great. Again, I think I still even though my problem with I still give it a ten out of ten. I loved it. I highly recommend it. But uh thanks for watching. If you want to see more of me, you can subscribe down below. Thanks.